Hello, everybody. This is Dr. Magarelli, uh, CNY Fertility, Colorado. Uh, beautiful day, beautiful day. Um, I'm hoping you're having a good day, too. Uh, I am now, if you guys are on Instagram, please jump over to our Facebook uh, Live or the YouTube Live channel. Um, and uh, we'll be happy to kind of have you join us over there so you can see the slideshow. Today, we're going to be talking, uh, as I promised, we're going to do the follow-up on supplements. Um, I'm going to try a, a couple of things differently where you don't have to see my face while we're going through this. Hey, Kaylin, Miss Puffer, how are you? Good to see you um, again, always. And uh, Brittany, hi. Stephanie, hi. Good to see you guys. Um, welcome on board. I guess Olivia just jumped on. Kelly, good to see you. Good to see you. It's wonderful that you're sort of uh, visiting with me tonight. I'm uh, just on Saturday. I uh, did this talk actually for the uh, Yosan University um, Doctor of um, Oriental Reproductive Medicine uh, students as well as faculty. And I was asked to have a conversation about supplements. And I know we had done a little bit uh, prior uh, about, uh, I guess, uh, five or six talks ago, we, we talked about, hi, Deshana, good to see you, Elma. Natalie, good to see you, hello. Looking forward to seeing you tomorrow. Hey, Kayla, for your FET, make sure you say, I saw you last night, so I'll remember, okay, because that helps me. Kelly, Maxwell, good to see you. Rebecca, yes, it may, Rebecca, it's gonna be fun. Um, we're so excited. Dr. Fink is on board. Actually, I'm going to be going away for uh, four or five days with my wife. Uh, she's doing her first, as is Dr. Diane Credenda from East Winds Acupuncture. She's going to be doing back in season to do her Ironman 70.3 triathlon in St. George. Um, her last name is Credenda. If you guys like that sort of thing, they're, they're streaming it live. Uh, so I'm actually not going to be here uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Um, so um, um, Dr. Banerjee is here. Dr. Fink is here, of course. Amy, um, Amy uh, Jenkins, my nurse practitioner, going to be on board. Uh, thank you, Ke Kelly. Um, so as I was saying, um, supplements, um, I was asked actually to challenge the, the notion that uh, we will need, um, we need supplements. And if we do need supplements, are, is, there a, is there a chance that getting those supplements may actually be harmful than helpful? And so I'm gonna kind of walk through the data as I understand it. As usual, folks, I'm gonna try to do a 20 minute uh, discussion uh, with you all. And then um, um, I will jump to questions and answers of any top topic, but during my talk, I try to push through um, as much information on you guys as possible. We do record these. I'm going to change the format to look like this because I think that's um, better for you guys to read than like that. This is slightly small. This is larger, but you don't get to see my uh, uh, pretty face. <laughs> okay. Uh, Olivia, absolutely. Molecular fertility supplements, um, uh, they uh, they absolutely use the top-notch um, uh, uh, nutri nutraceuticals in it. I've been very impressed and I'll kind of show you some data on that. Uh, it's a very good place to start, but I think I'm gonna, I think I'll keep it like this for a while and I'll just maybe jump back and forth um, so that uh, you guys can read the slides. Sometimes I put too much information on there. Other than that, uh, we are we are full steam ahead here in, uh, in Colorado. We do, um, by the way, just so you know, there's, there is in all of the CNY facilities like Syracuse, Albany, and Colorado Springs, pretty much we each do the exact same type of uh, treatments. Um, so there's there's not really um, one place does this, one place does that. I know I was asked today whether or not we do um, abdominal retrievals. Of course, in a rare case, we actually will do abdominal retrievals. Um, anyway, the, the lecture went fantastic. I really had a great time. I love teaching the uh, the uh, uh, doctors of uh, Oriental Reproductive Medicine. They're very smart. Um, there you go. We're going to be center for good. Uh, we'll talk about egg quality supplements. Great. That's a great place. Um, uh, so um, why don't I just begin like like I usually do? And like I said, I'm going to try to keep this uh, image bigger 
so that you guys can read everything. But on this first slide here, let me see if I can get my, um, where am I here? Here I am. Okay, let me get my pointer. Easier to see, kind of like a laser. Okay, so here's a nice uh, infographic saying that on average, Americans spend about $56 per month. By the way, these are not infertile couples. On, um, on supplements, and in some cases, about 13% spend over $100. Um, so if you guys want to, and this would be helpful to me, um, kind of give me a sense. If you keep track of how much you spend on supplements, throw it out there. Um, I'd like to understand it better. Um, I really would like uh, to understand it better. Uh, 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 this is an estimate for non-fertility patients, but my guess is you guys are spending quite a bit more on that, especially if you've read um, it starts with the egg and then, oh my God, you have to do every single one of those nutrients. And, you know, you sort of get in this um, uh, almost like a rabbit hole. If I got to buy this, I've got to buy that. It's going to change everything. And what I'm hoping that this will do today is 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 kind of work with you on getting a more practical. So there you go. Thank you. $150 a month, $240 a month, $60, $80 a month. You know, and and that's those are hefty, Kaylee and Olivia and Brittany. I, I I understand that. So we're working very hard to look at, you know, are there ways you can um maybe you know back off on some or maybe um, uh, maybe use whole foods. So for example, this was a paper in Fertility and Sterility. That's our premier journal, September of 2018. Um, here they're saying the Mediterranean diet, low fast carbs. So that's the green crunchy vegetables, not the white potatoes or the uh, baked goods. Moderate protein, about 0.8 um, uh, uh, grams per kilogram weight or one gram per kilogram weight. So if you're 150 pounds, you might do uh, 70 grams of, um, uh, of uh, protein. Um, high fats, uh, we talk about fats, polyunsaturated omega-3s, uh, the fish oils. Um, I will tell you in one slide very quickly what exactly has been proven to be helpful to our patients. So I'm challenged always to do what we can, what can we do to give you the best information? And as you know, what CNY is famous for at the most cost effective price. So the answer to this question from a fertility doctor is the Mediterranean diet, low fast carbs, moderate protein, high fat, limited calories, move and fast at least weekly for about 14 hours, which means dinner Sunday, and then a late, late lunch on Monday, and that's 14 hours like that. And if you do that uh, once a week, you, you, you're, you're likely, especially if you can get organic foods, and again, you don't have to, fresh vegetables, again, canned vegetables work, you don't have to get fresh. Um, and I know we, there's a lot of discussion about the keto, and, and really the goal there is avoiding sugars. That's our approach, is avoid sugars. So, Here's the quick and down and dirty of what has been proven to impact fertility. Very, very straight. Folate, which is a B9, iron, vitamin D3, and the omega-3 fatty acids found in fish oils and salmon. Believe it or not, those one, two, three, four have been shown and been demonstrated to have the most impact on outcomes. So it's not a lot. If those are the minimum, then you, you're, you're, you're covered, especially in the American diet and especially if you're avoiding carbs and you're eating things like you know, good fatty meats. Um, if you could do grass-fed meats, again, the grass-fed meats have a huge amount of B vitamins. I know liver, everybody goes, yuck. But believe it or not, you know, one to two servings of liver a week gives you pretty much the vast majority of all the vitamins that you need. And folate, by the way, is specifically for the MTHFR folks, specifically because folate is the methylated form of folic acid. So when you buy your vitamins, and by the way, the molecular fertility has them, you know, there, there is methylated B vitamins in there. So the tetrahydrofolates. So that's it very quickly. Now let's go on. <laughs> okay. So um, just to give you a quick background, my bachelor's, my bachelor's was in ecology and evolutionary biology. 
My master's was in nutritional biochemistry. My PhD actually was in nutritional biochemistry and animal physiology. I did my MD at the University of Arizona. I did my uh, OBGYN residency at Duke University, my fellowship at UCLA. I created the Advanced PCOS Institute, which morphed into the Institute for Sustained Health, and that morphed into two integrative bariatric medicine programs, hospital-based. I also, as I've mentioned, co-created the uh, CMAP protocol with acupuncture, worked as an advisor to the American Board of Oriental Reproductive Medicine, and I still teach and I love to do that sort of thing. So again, what I want you to hear from me is maybe this guy, you know, he has spent 12 years studying nutrition alone before he became a physician. You know, let's, the hope is that um, uh, I can give you good advice. My PhD thesis, just for fun, was looking at the, the uh, uh, reproduction in shrimp. Um, here you see right on the uh, eye of the stalk here is an ID tag so I could identify each female shrimp. This was 1981. It was how to get them to reproduce in captivity. And this shows you the direct effect on the weight of the female, which is a function of her fertility, on just icosapentanoic acid, which is a fatty acid that we recommend humans do. And it turns out this species of um, shrimp actually helped and it got them more fertile. So this is, a, this is a public health opinion piece. It says, what is the influence of diet on fertility and the implications for public health? And clearly they looked at all the literature and it came out to be very simple. If you could do a folic acid, polyunsaturated fast and plant-based foods, and I know that's kind of contradictory to what you hear from Dr. Kiltz, but remember chefs, each chef, uh, cooks in their own restaurant, um, and there's no downside to good eating. So think of the Mediterranean, which is uh, heavy fats, green above ground vegetables. And of course, the bottom line in all of this is, well, we got to learn more about it. So this may not be that easy, but the point of this slide is when you look at fertility outcomes like pregnancy, time to conception, ovulation, sperm quality, embryo development, uh, live births, it's not just a supplement. Yes, um, there are risk factors like saturated fats and sugars. They do have a negative impact on a viable pregnancy in live births. Protective factors are the Mediterranean style diet, folate, mono and polyunsaturated fats, MCT oil, coconut oil, um, uh, avocado oil, olive oil, um, these are the ones to look for iron or fish, which is, of course is going to be your uh, icosapentanoic acid and docosahexanoic acid. But there's other determinants, and that's why I asked about income. I mean, if you don't have a lot of money to pay for these supplements, of course, that's going to affect you know, your ability. And there's other psychosocial factors that affect these outcomes, as well as body mass. You know, uh, elevated BMI plays a huge role. Uh, in terms of uh, fertility outcomes for the male and the female, as well as physical inactivity. So a supplement is not going to solve all these factors. All of these factors play a role. And then I list here what we call frankenfoods, like Frankenstein. I list pesticides and herbicides so you can see um, the... the um, uh, there are many other factors. So Supplement is not going to is not going to do the the switch. A a good diet with strategic supplements is probably all you need. So this was the topic of my talk: uh, help or harm nutraceuticals and uh, assisted reproduction. And a Trojan horse is good, or something gets secreted in that's not good for you. A golden fleece is kind of a reward. Okay, so um, I'm not going to spend a lot of time, but here are some of the major vitamins. We're not going to go into the structures. Again, this was a lecture for my um, uh, students, but the bottom line is everything is based on the molecular structure. Everything is based. It is, there's, no, there's absolutely no magical substances. If these structures are missing in, in uh, your diet, then it is likely there's going to be a problem, but it's almost impossible in the U.S. to be missing them. But you may not have the strategic amount you want for pregnancy. Um, this was, again, nothing against any of these products. This happened to be a brand new product on the market called Modern Fertility Prenatals. Uh, it's $30 a month or a dollar a day. 
And then they're saying that these other ones, which are $12 a month, eight cents a serving, um, were not as good. And I, I kind of wondered, and they said, oh, this was made by OBGYNs, which, which is a way of us um, disturbing or, or, or diffusing the real truth is what does the nutritionist say? So for example, one of the things you need to know is that for most doctors, we get about 24 hours in our 40,000 hours of medical training on nutrition and all of the advisors for this nutritional supplement are physicians, no dietitians, no nutritionists, no biochemists. So you gotta be very circumspect um, um, in terms of listening to folks uh, tell you, you need this or that, and you wanna go to the source. Even in Chinese medicine, they get about 75 hours of training. So it's not very much. But a certified nutrition specialist you know, is gonna have to do a master's and doctoral degree. I've done both. They have to do at least a thousand hours in a supervised setting. Of course, I've done many tens of thousands of hours and they have to be board certified. So it's important as to where you get your information. Don't, don't be hoodwinked. Um, here's just an example of three different, uh, three different uh, vitamins on the market. The uh, blue is the modern fertility. Um, the purple, of, it turns out, is Walgreens. And if you look at the Walgreens, eight cents a serving, you see that their omega-3 fatty acids, the critical ones are at really high. Folate, again, the other critical one, really high. These are all good things. Vitamin A, uh, iron, D3 are equal to or better. So here you have something that's, you know, uh, eight cents. Um, I'm sorry, I'm gonna take off that branding. That branding is interfering with you saying the slides here. Let me just, uh, let me just, uh, change this here, go back here. I'm gonna get rid of the branding here and maybe just have a simple one. Uh, let's see if I can get a simple one here. It's got too much stuff here, minimal. There you go, that's a minimal. All righty. Um, so as you can see, you know, the cost may not necessarily equate to, to an effective um, uh, uh, dose, okay? So you just want to make sure you, you're covered. And let me get my little uh, pointer back. So, you know, here's the modern fertility. Here's the Walgreens. Here's modern fertility. Everything, you know, there's all different fees associated. But, you know, again, there's mixtures. But if you look at the critical stuff, you know, you have to look at it critically. So there's a thing called what we call weasel words. Uh, weasel words are dangerous words because they think it makes it sound like um, something's effective. For example, it's an informal term aimed at creating an impression. So, for example, a growing body of a growing body of evidence says, "Well, where is the raw data?" People are saying, "Which people?" It has been claimed that by whom, what? These are called weasel words. They're just sort of tricks to get you to buy products, new and improved, compared to what? Better, optimal, um, acts effective, efficient. There is evidence that experience shows. And so I was teaching the uh, doctoral students, you know, it is, our, it is our responsibility as physicians and doctors to help our patients sort of get the right medication. So this is just a quick study that looked at um, the use of nutrition to help in especially the COVID crisis. And even there, the, the paper basically said that you need to have well-designed studies and it really should be presented by the health service industry and not, uh, not by the industry, in other words, by a national health service. So what I like to talk about is the National Institute of Health. So when I'm going through this lecture with you, I'm gonna talk about that. We're just gonna move on. And by the way, why is it so hard for us to give you rock solid research data on, um, on uh, what to take and what not to take? Well, the reason we can't is we cannot do experiments you know, on, um, on babies and we cannot, we cannot do experiments on pregnant moms and we cannot impregnate um, 10 women with one sperm. We cannot impregnate triplets with one sperm. These, so we can't do the actual tests. I'm just saying, uh, Brittany, that you can use, as long as you understand what's required, don't get caught up in, uh, in, in what brand, see what kind of, of um, uh, vitamin composition and if it meets the needs, and certainly the, the, the Walgreens one does, 
then you're covered, okay? Then you're covered. Uh, yes, intralipids are okay to do, but we'll get back to that. It's not best. I'm not saying which is best and what is not best. I'm saying when we read these things, we have to be careful, essentially, you know, that we're, we are um, not being hoodwinked into thinking one is better than another. So I'm not going to go through these. These are uh, the traditional Chinese medicine view of, uh, of uh, vitamins. We're not going to do that. Now, this is where the talk got interesting. This was a study looking at antioxidants. Now, antioxidants have been touted, touted um, to, to be perfect for male infertility, and it is. However, what they're saying here is that there has to be a balance between the oxidants and the antioxidants, and that if you have too little antioxidants, then you have infertility, but you could also have too many antioxidants. So the key there is ensuring you're, 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 you're taking sort of uh, the diet first, the Mediterranean diet the, um, a, a, with supplements. And those supplements are very specific, but don't overdo it. Make sure you're looking at all of them. So let's go through all of the ones that we know about. L-carnitine, it's been associated with improvements in female fertility. Um, it, I'm not gonna necessarily go through the pathway, it has antioxidant effects. It has effects on anti-inflammatory effects. It, it uh, has what's called anti-cell death effects. So L-carnitine has been shown to be effective. And the nice thing is they can show you all the mechanisms. For example, it improves hormone balance, decreases cytokine release, decreases apoptosis, cellular death. It tends to have an, uh, a positive effect on reducing endometriosis. It helps with hormone secretion imbalance, improves PCOS symptoms, reduces amenorrhea, regulates them, and helps regulate the menstrual cycle. Well, great. You know, the good news about that, really easy to get. The Kills Keto diet gives you tons of L-carnitine because you're eating meats. Car carnivore, right? Carnitine, it comes from meats. It helps improve sperm. So that was the female. It helps improve sperm, total motility. Again. You don't have to take it by a supplement. You can take it essentially, with, and I'm going to show you at the end of this slide where you get all these supplements from, but you can essentially do it by eating uh, a good chunk of ribeye, eating meats, eating organ meats. You're going to get it for free. The B vitamins, these are a little bit tougher. The B vitamins come from wheat products. They, you know, they, they supplement them, but they also come from meats, and they come from liver especially, nuts. Um, uh, shrimp, you know, there's a really good source. And the ones you're familiar with are folate and the B12 and the B6. But, you know, there's been many studies looking at the need for folate and B12. And that's why when I started this lecture, I said, that might be one, a methylated B complex. You might want to add that to your, to your supplement or look in your prenatal vitamin. And if they're using methyl, um, um, uh, uh, tetrahydro, uh, the, 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 um, the methylated B vitamins, like from thorn and, and also in, in our uh, molecular fertility, then you're covered. You don't have to worry about it or just eat a nice chunk of liver, uh, once, once a week and you're kind of covered. Uh, in some studies looking at folic acid, this was just natural conception in all women. They found that if you had a, a the right amount of say more of, the folic acid uh, uh, in your bloodstream, you tended to have a slight improvement in natural pregnancy, um, but that was for all women, even those who are infertile. But when you looked at women who were infertile, um, uh, there was almost a threefold improvement. So that's a simple one. Methylated B vitamins, they come in your prenatal vitamins, you're covered. Here's a look at IVF success rates in folate methylated B vitamins. Here you're seeing almost a doubling in the live birth rates. Uh, when you add it, you know, that supplements can, can, uh, can, by supplementation, you improve the live birth rates. And also by diet plus supplementation, you increase live birth rates. So folic acid, by the way, folic acid is critical for sperm. So not only is it critical for, for the female eggs, egg quality, uh, live birth rates, because remember, a function of egg quality is do I have a high birth rate? Here you see there was a 53% improvement in sperm concentration when, when the males 
were supplemented with folic acid so or folate. So getting a, 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 um, a methylated B complex, you know, prenatal vitamin, and if you look at uh, many of the fertile aids for men, they have methylated B vitamins. So simple. That's, you know, that's very straightforward. We're not going to go into the mechanisms, but there are definitely mechanisms. It certainly can help for males and females, but again, too much of a good thing. Don't super saturate your, your partners with so many B vitamins that it may actually have a negative effect. So looking at the um, uh, requirements, our, our nutritional requirements is a great place to start or uh, you know, somewhere around 1,500 milligrams of B12 uh, seems to be like kind of the right number, but less than that is fine. B6, again, look at all the different sources, beef liver, chickpeas, chicken breast, turkey meat, uh, ground beef, uh, cottage cheese, nuts. Um, these are spinach. These are sources. Some of the best sources um, again, are the liver and organ meats. It's remarkable. Uh, like one three ounce portion of liver has more than 50% of the daily requirements uh, for, B, for B6. And B6, of course, is pyridoxine. And then the NIH says the same thing. The NIH says um, it is important for the nervous system, the red blood cells, function of two very critical enzymes in the enzyme pathways. It's critical for energy, critical for endurance. So again, not super extra amounts, just simply um, the um, enough from a single supplement or from a prenatal vitamin or a single men's vitamin you're covered. What about vitamin C? It's an antioxidant. I can tell you throughout this lecture, oxidation, if you're not managing your oxidation or inflammation, um, um, then your, your impact on fertility is pretty high. Um, by the way, there's a discussion of cannabis. It is absolutely now known that Men who are who are using any form of cannabis, whether it's eaten, smoked, vape, what have you, have critically almost no motility of their sperm, and it critically impacts fertility. So, uh, please tell your guys there's just no amount that's going to help, and over 50% of uh, miscarriages are the male. So, that's the that's the cannabis question over there. But vitamin C, of course, plays huge amount of roles. It, it, it is a scrubber. It scrubs oxidative products. So vitamin C, what is that? Antioxidant. Vitamin E, what is that? Antioxidant. CoQ10, what is that? Antioxidant. Um, so the uh, uh, antioxidants, again, is something you want to look for in your, in your products. But, however, all of these antioxidants can't override environmental pollution, smoking, alcohol, poor nutrition, obesity, infections, autoimmune disease, chronic diseases. So you're always in the balance of a healthy body is a fertile body. So a supplement, oh yeah, cannabis on females. Remember, the males are lucky. They make um, um, uh, sperm fresh every day. So after three months, if they've had no drugs, uh, then their sperm might get back to normal, whereas a female, you're you're exposed to that, and it's permanent because your eggs don't rejuvenate. So any exposure is one, you know, one tick towards you know destruction. Okay, so you 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 really don't want to do that. So reactive oxygen species, it's you know it's um, it's found in smoking, obesity, alcohol, excess uh, ultraviolet light, endometriosis, PCOS, hydrosalpings. It affects aging, disease, sperm. So anything we can do to reduce oxidation, oxidative products, so vitamin C, it's a great antioxidant, vitamin E, CoQ10. So again, look in your multivitamin, just simple multivitamin. If it's there, you're fine. NIH says the same thing. These are sources, of course, of vitamin C. Everyone thinks of orange juice, but believe it or not, red peppers uh, have 106% of the, uh, just a half a cup. Um, green peppers, 71%, just a, 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 a half a cup. You know, uh, broccoli, a half a cup is about 50%. So there are many ways you can get it through foods, and it really behooves us to, to get it through foods.
Um, it says female antioxidant use. If you don't use it, right, if a person is given a placebo versus given an antioxidant like vitamin C's or um, uh, CoQ10, you can see almost a doubling in the live birth rates. Simple. So CoQ10, ubiquinol. Um, these are things you, you they're very easily and effective. Uh, here's for the uh, male. Just look, look at this. I mean, this is the use, the odds of success, live birth rates, if the female is taking an antioxidant. Well, if the male is taking an antioxidant, you get four times the odds of success in, in terms of live birth rates. So again, the male plays a huge role in terms of, of live birth outcomes or conversely play a huge role in miscarriages. Calcium. This is sort of a quick easy on the calcium um, because the calcium is, it's unbelievably hard for you to mess up your calcium, but you also wanna have calcium available for your pregnancy, meaning you don't wanna get osteoporosis. So vitamin D3 with K2 and uh, a calcium, and, and you can get a lot of that from your diet, but it's also in our prenatal vitamins. NIH says, of course, it's important, a uh, simple, plain, low-fat yogurt has 32% of the, of the uh, daily requirements. A mozzarella cheese has 25%. You know, cheddar cheese has 25%. So, you know, getting calcium, is, that's one way to, to get it. But you can also get it from kale. You can get calcium from um, uh, tofu. You can get calcium from sardines, believe it or not, especially with the bones in them. So there's many places you can do it. And Vitamin D, of course, is that sunshine vitamin. And I can tell you, I used to measure everyone's vitamin D3. And I will tell you now, the, when patients come into my clinic, their vitamin Ds are in the low 20s. And as you can see here, this is the effect of vitamin D on um, aneuploidy, abnormal embryos. So the lower amount, this is a low amount of vitamin D3 in the bloodstream leads to a much higher proportion of abnormal embryos than a high amount of serum vitamin D. So what do you do? That one I do think is worth taking as a supplement It's a, uh, because it's really hard to get it uh, from a natural source. So you might want to take anywhere between 2,000 and 5,000 international units of vitamin D3. And if you can combine it with K2, you're in really good shape. So here you see the impact on, of vitamin D levels on in the bloodstream on IVF success. Again, simple supplementation, you can get almost a 35% higher in, a chance of achieve, achieving a um, success, again, using simply a, a very inexpensive. Now, what if we already have euploid embryos? Is a higher level of vitamin D important? No, of course not, it's already, it's already there. Oh, uh, let's see. Uh, I've already gone through that. And then what about the essential fatty acids like docosa um, hexanoic acid and icosapentanoic acid, the fish oils? Again, the fish oils um, um, are very critical, but, but it, uh, to our, our cellular membrane, it is critical to sperm. However, um, they have not been able to figure out the right ideal dosing for the male with regards to how much. So again, a basic Costco or, and, or just look at your, your prenatal vitamins. A lot of them come with the essential fatty acids, then that's, that's it. You've done it. You've, you've, you've really, um, you know, given yourself everything you need in addition. And this is just a cow study saying even they are still trying to figure out is there a hype associated with these polyunsaturated fatty acids? And what they what they what they believe is that it does improve a quality and embryo quality. So there's a lot, a lot of vitamins I'm not going to talk about, and, and certainly I'm not going to talk about ashwagandha or talk about Chinese herbs or talk about um, other types of supplements. The supplements that I'm talking about are specifically the vitamins. Um, but really, um, these are the, this is the best information I can give you, is if you look at this first slide here, you know, vitamin E, you get 37, 37% of all the vitamin E you need just in a handful of almonds. You can get, you can get um, it also from a half a filet of salmon. 
You can also get about 20% of your needs with just an avocado. So you can make a nice little uh, piece of salmon with an avocado on the side and maybe chop up some nuts and put some spinach on it. And lo and behold, you've knocked out all your vitamin E requirements. Iron, very simple. We're not into the fortified cereal because those are pure sugar, but things like um, beef, easy iron source, shellfish, easy. The beans, the lentils um, uh, is easy. Um, uh, baking chocolate, that sounds great. Uh, uh, mushrooms, coenzyme Q10, you can see it's very simple. It's, it's in your fishes, it's in your meats, it's in your lamb, it's in your nuts, it's in your chicken, it's in sardines, it's in various olive oils. You can get lots of CoQ10 in there. But again, this might be something that, eh, it's not too expensive. Add that to your, your protocol. Zinc for men and as well as for women. Everybody talks about give your men oysters like an aphrodisiac. Well, it's really, it was the zinc that supplemented. Look at this, per six oysters, 500% of the zinc you need in six oysters. Um, chicken legs, lamb chops, very straightforward. Uh, lentils, again, for your vegetarians. Uh, again, we're not into the oatmeal, shiitake mushrooms. Selenium, that kind of comes with the uh, zinc containing things. Um, so Brazil nuts, again, the, the, the oysters, they sort of sit together. The tofu, again, they sort of sit together. Seafood, they sort of sit together. Shiitake mushrooms, again, for your vegetarian. Um, um, and then here, the polyunsaturated fatty oils. Again, it's, it's basically the best source and monounsaturated, by the way. So things like olives, avocados, coconut, uh, grass-fed butters, animal fats, especially from grass but not the corn oils, sunflower oils, rapeseed oils. They actually are counter in terms of health. Cysteine, another, that's the acetylcysteine. Um, again, you can get it from, from your, the foods that you eat. Again, I'm using lentils as an example, but chicken, you know, beans, uh, turkey. Um, vitamin C, we all kind of think we know that, but actually kale and broccoli and kiwi fruit and strawberries and bell peppers, you know, <laughs> bell peppers, a cup has about 211% of what's needed. Um, salmon roe for DHA is fantastic. Any of the roes, which are basically caviars, fabulous, fabulous. That's like organ meat, liver, uh, salmon roe. Uh, vitamin D foods, salmon, of course, I just said it. Um, uh, again, we're not much into the milk products. Um, uh, so really, it's a little, that's why I'm saying getting supplements. Although, if you eat one large egg, well, again, it's only 6%. So it's pretty hard to get enough vitamin D. So definitely do a supplement. So this was what I was saying about carnitine. You never have to worry about it because, as you can see, this is a car carnivore's paradise. Um, these are some of the resources I used. Uh, this book is, this is for the, the nerds, uh, Nutrition, Fertility, and uh, Human Reproductive Function. Great book, uh, very technical. Chinese way to, to a long and healthy life. Not much on, on diet, more on other things. Deep nutrition, if you like epigenetics. The fertility diet out of Harvard, um, okay. Fully fertile is just a plan. And then this is death by dieting. And that's a whole nother subject uh, in and of itself. So anyway, so I just kind of wanted to get us um, aware uh, that a lot of research needs to be done, many more things I need to understand. Um, um, all righty, so let me grab some water here. And as I promised, although I went a little bit long, but I can't help it, um, I'm ready to answer any questions you have, any subject or this subject, um, up to you guys. All right. Huh. That was, um, I tried, that was an hour lecture that I shoved in there. Uh, N-acetylcysteine, I already mentioned about that. That's what MAC is, N-acetylcysteine. Uh, it is useful, but there are, there are natural products uh, whereby you can get access to it. So let me see if I can bring that back here. And acetylcysteine, I put that up here. Yeah, there they are. Turkey, soybeans, wing beans, sesame seed, couscous, lentils, chicken, kibasi. Now that's a good one. Butternut squash, oat bran. So those are excellent sources of cysteine. Uh, where is your supplement recommendation guide? 
Uh, uh, it, it's in the uh, family building guide. Uh, it's not mine. It's CNY Fertilities. Um, so they have a lot of good information there. Um, I keep hearing women over 40 have a better outcome with fresh over frozen. No, uh, that's not true. Uh, that has nothing to do with age, fresh versus frozen. It has to do with estradiol levels. Uh, the reason they're getting fresh is because they tend not to have enough embryos to freeze. If my TSH is over three, should Synthroid be upped? Yes, absolutely. Um, uh, how long does it take your eggs to become fully clean? They will never be dirty in your life. So your eggs are your eggs, your cells are your cells. There's no good or dirty or bad dirty. But what you want is you want to improve your own whole body nutrition. Um, um, uh, this was super formative. Okay. <laughs> All right. Yes, Brandy. Uh, one of the great things about Dr. Kilson is programs is wide open. Give ideas. The idea is for us to throw um, uh, mud on the wall. Dr. Kilson and I have been debating literally for 25 years, just about every morning for an hour, you know, what is the best way to help folks? But the, the overlying principle is help folks. My, my take on it is slightly different than his. His evolves. Mine evolves. Um, does workout supplements, uh, pre-workout affect male, female infertility? And no, they do not uh, affect fertility. Um, the reason folks are making you buy that stuff, again, I'm not sure there's good data to support it. And certainly not if, unless you're a competitive athlete, do you really need to take supplemental branch chain amino acids. It's just eat a steak, eat a steak. Are there any supplements that shouldn't be taken together? Not really. Uh, spreading them out is a good way. Um, uh, frozen embryo transfer is usually more successful. That's not true, Deidre. Is there a reason why a woman would be able to do a frozen transfer? She may not make, uh, well, there's no, there's no reason she shouldn't be able to do it, but there may not be a reason to do it. Hey, Maria Rivera from Florida. Good to see you. Hi. Um, should I have my labs done before my consult? Yes. Um, claims not to be able to read AMH or FSH results, but they should order them. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Get your um, semen analysis, get your HSG, get all your basic labs like hepatitis A, B, C, H, I, V, syphilis, get your thyroid panel, which including antithyroid antibodies. Um, uh, 41 year old, AMH was 1.5. What? I've been on so okay. Not I, I fought okay. Okay. What is my perspective on doing intralipids and on and wash day of retrieval if doing three day fresh or is for no nah, there's no studies, Amber. Uh, there's no studies. If we have carbs like pizza made with coconut flour, again, that's not a um what they call a fast carb because it's actually a nut. They call them flowers, but almond flour is nothing but pulverized almond nuts that can act like a flower. Tiffany Young, 40 years old. Uh, your chance for IVF is about uh, 10 or 15 percent in basic IVF. And if you do chromosomal testing, you can get two chromosomally normal embryos. It could be as high as 40 percent. Uh, Amber, Christy O'Neill FSH changes. I know this because of oh, them. Can I upload all results to the portal? Yes, you can. Um, Janelle, I have failed IVF. I'm 42 and want to, go to give IUI a try. I, am I wasting a cycle and should I continue with IVF? Well, the chance, if, if remind me how young you are, I think it's in their 40s, it's a one or 2% chance with IUI. And if that's what you want to do, that's what you want to do. Yes, you can choose between fresh or frozen. But I think the people were saying one's better than the other. And I don't think there's any data for that for everybody. For certain people, yes. Maritza, my husband is taking serovital, growth hormone secretagog, growth hormone secretagog, fish oil, omega 3s, men's multivitamin, lots of antioxidants, zinc and vitamin D3, folic acid. Uh, give your husband a methylated B vitamin. Um, Brittany, you're so welcome. Happy to work with you too. Okay, thank you. All right, slowing down here. Uh, how long after retrieval does estrogen levels go down for transfer purpose? Mine is 3,500, two weeks. Uh, um, two weeks after your retrieval, your estrogen should head down to around the hundreds. Can you please repeat 40-year-old what percentage? About 10 or 15%, Tiffany. 
Uh, give me in some instance other than less than five eggs or three for day three fresh. Uh, what other point would you recommend? Don't understand. After the egg retrieval, how long does it take to know if you have mature eggs the next morning? And what size should follicles be when you trigger? Anything in um, sort of East Coast is about 16 millimeters and uh, Midwest, West Coast is about 18 millimeters. Uh, my husband takes magnesium and B12. Is that okay? Sure it is. Um, where are we? Yeah, Amber, make a sentence. I'm not sure what you're asking. Uh, recommendations, recommendations for repeat implantation failure. Well, first and foremost, make sure your uterus has been evaluated within the last six months by a hysteroscope. Make sure you don't have endometriosis. That's a laparoscope. Make sure you don't have any chromosomal abnormalities. Uh, make sure you, you have done an ERA, endometrial receptivity assay. I don't know a Nutriburst liquid vitamin when preparing for IVF. If it's just a vitamin, it's probably fine. But again, um, be circumspect. Be circumspect. Just be circumspect about your vitamins and, and authorities, okay? Uh, Kelly, she's asking why else would fresh be good aside from having less than five embryos? Okay, so you do a fresh embryo transfer every case. Every case, do a fresh embryo. What's the downside? You put the embryo in. Now, if you're doing genetic testing, of course, it's frozen automatically. So you got to do a frozen embryo. If you have ovarian hyperstimulation, then you do a frozen embryo transfer for safety. If, um, if you have, um, that's about it. So fresh will work day three, day five, because it's your embryos. I like day five if you can. And I usually recommend to grow to day five mainly because that extra um, few days will help the lab figure out which is the best of the best. Uh, the endometriosis receptivity assay, thank you, Jessica, is an ERA. Okay. Shea Black, can this list be emailed or posted on the website? This list, sorry, don't know what you're talking about, Shea. Um, our, our lectures are always posted, they're recorded and posted. How long after a failed transfer should you wait to try again? The very next month is just fine. As long as you kind of work out, what, why did I fail? At least have that conversation. You want to you wanna get a sense of why it didn't work. And we may not have an answer, but somebody should be critical and look at all aspects. Remember, alcohol, tobacco, drugs on your partner has a big role in implantation failure. And uh, this lecture is this weekend uh, with the uh, Yosan uh, University uh, lecture series. I will tell you, if you want to improve the chance for your, to get success, get your men to acupuncture, get your men on Chinese herbs, get your men to, to, to meet up with um, you know, trained folks who help with fertility. Uh, it's more than 50% of your success is right there. Call the mail. Um, okay. Danielle, laparoscopy done. ERA done. SHG and HSG done. All are good. Thoughts on program, antihistamines, intralepids for repeat. Yes, yes. Begin to look at sort of the, the, the outliers of management because the inliers haven't been there. Um, Danielle. In other words, yeah, begin to stretch a little bit. And that's the nice thing about CNY is, you know, we want you to stretch um, so that we give you uh, uh, an improved um, opportunity. What's something that can help with morphology? Well, not much because morphology of sperm, um, morphology of sperm is really genetically based, but the but the uh, capability of the sperm is uh, nutritional and lifestyle based. How many weeks out before retrieval should husband do acupuncture? Any amount of time, any amount of time. Don't get, they don't have a protocol, so they get immediate effect because quite frankly, they're making sperm every, every heartbeat. I saw that some women do acupuncture before transfer. Oh my gosh, a star level. Go to eastwindsacupuncture.com and go to the website and all of our original research uh, is there on how acupuncture helps 
with uh, fertility. So eastwindsacupuncture.com, Dr. Nyan Credenda, she has a whole section on the research that created the Credenda Magarelli Acupuncture Protocol that's used around the world. Um, would I be able to, uh, I wanna do a frozen embryo return or, or I have to meet your clients first. Wow. Either, would I be able to just, okay, sorry. I'm curious about acupuncture as well. Massage didn't work for me. Well, um, and I've never done. Well, Amber, um, the data I have is on acupuncture. I don't have any data on um, on uh, which massage helps or how it helps. Anything that makes you relax is good too. What su supplement should I take for IVF to increase without spending a lot of money currently taking prenatal aspirin and CoQ10? I would add a methylated B vitamins and fish oil. That's it. Methylated B vitamins and fish oils to that pile, fantastic. On a day of endometrial egg receiving, is it the same time for sperm retrieval? Okay, don't know what that is. Uh, okay. Well, you get a prescription for your husband to do a Speedman analysis. Yes, of course, um, of course, absolutely. Those are called doctor's orders, absolutely. Call the 800 number, they'll help you. All righty, see where we're at here. Quiet, <laughs> everybody went quiet. Uh, or maybe it's uh, any other questions here. So essentially the goal of my talk today, um, okay, here, uh, I take prenatal zinc, folate, fish oil, overboost, CoQ10, B-complex, good job. I had, Brittany, I had three miscarriages. How do I know if I can't carry a baby and may have to look into a surrogate? Well, there's a point of no return. If, it, if you've done three and you've covered all the bases, it may be time to look at a gestational carrier. What should I take to increase egg quality? All of the things that I was describing, the uh, B complex, the folate, vitamin D3, essential fatty acids, and a good prenatal, you've done everything possible. Lee Paris, I don't see your question, Lee Paris. I just see your question is being skipped, but I don't see your question, uh, La Paris uh, Williams. Uh, is there a good place to find the slides you use today? Absolutely, everything is recorded. Everything is recorded, so um, just go to the Facebook and our CNY Fertility, it's all there. Is uh, DHEA uh, is controversial. If you have PCOS, don't do it. If you have low testosterone, do do it. Why does 40 year old have 15 percentage with an AMH being two? Because of your age, Tiffany. And it's not 15, I said 10 to, 10 to 15% um, because of your biology. That's an excellent. Um, how long until I get my cycle after an egg retrieval? Usually two weeks. Uh, it doesn't go back to your normal, uh, Caitlin. It, 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 it's uh, two weeks. Low dose naltrexone, it's an anti-inflammatory. This is not the topic today. My thoughts, don't have them any yet. I don't have many thoughts on it yet. If you freeze your eggs, what percentage usually survive the thaw? If it's a day five of freeze, better than 90%. If it's a day three freeze, about 50%. Uh, Laparis Williams, you, you would basically want AMH, TSH, FSH. Those are the ovarian reserve tests. AMH, um, FSH, make sure if you get your FSH, you want to get estradiol and LH. The, those are the ones for the ovarian reserve. Thyroid is always good because it tells you about your ovarian reserve, uh, whether it's depleted. I'm 43 AMH of 1.5, ended up empty follicles, only one embryo. I prime with Omni. Is there anything else I could do to prevent empty? You can't prevent empty follicles, but again, nutrition, a healthy diet. Um, uh, moving, acupuncture for sure. Um, so now if you have a good acupuncture, even herbs. At 43, you should, if you're a tra have a trained uh, acupuncturist, you should, um, you, should, you should be able to use traditional Chinese medicine herbs. There's no level for LH. Um, there's no level for LH. Is a yeah, uh, Christy. Is uh, pregnancy and uh, progesterone and oil? Hi, Veronica. <laughs> Veronica, I love you. I love you. Uh, that's my fabulous nurse at work. Thank you, my dearest. Um, is uh, progesterone and oil better than just taking oral and vaginal progesterone? Well, 
Progesterone and oil amber has the most history and the most success. Um, um, so really, that's why it's the best. And everything that's been thrown against it, the vaginal, the patch, everything, creams, they always come up equal to or short. Whereas the progesterone and oil is just, it's, it's the gold standard. It's, it's actually the gold standards. Um, I don't know how you put up with all this. What? I appreciate it. I don't know what that means. Okay. Oksana, <laughs> you're sweet. What Chinese webs are good? Right now, my acupuncturist got my protocol for me, and she gave me Jade Moon Phase 2 over 35. Is there any other recommended? I go twice a week. for Kelly, I am not an acupuncturist, but my wife is. Uh, this is Dr. Diane Credenda at eastwindsacupuncture.com. If you want, you can do a telehealth with her one visit, and maybe she can help you and your acupuncturist. Again, I'm not the acupuncturist. Uh, Bree. The key thing about acupuncture and egg quality is really access to eggs and what they call neovascularization of the cortex of the ovary where the eggs are hanging out. So that's where it helps. Um, there are many other things that Chinese medicine will say, but to me, that's the biggest. Uh, why do you think, what do I think of dual stem cycle or just doing a regular egg retrieval? Yvonne, you will get more eggs and more embryos if you do the back-to-back -back IVF cycles uh, rather than a duo stim, which means trying to get uh, two retrievals in one um, in one month. So that's um, that's my thought about that. Um, woke up with night sweats. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, drenched in sweat. Yeah, I don't know. If anyone can help her about LDN and whether or not there are night sweats, I just don't know. Um, I don't know much about uh, how the uh, if if others have had night sweats with low dose naltrexone, um, um, maybe you can help her. I just don't have an answer for her because that's not that's really not my uh, wheelhouse. I don't know much about it. All right, can I go about the six cycle program? How can I go about the six cycle program? Talk to financial uh, at our at our uh, eight hundred program and ask them. Well, I can't, uh, Brittany. I'm telling you, man. The Walgreens is one of, is is um, the when I was um, is not the best, but it's had the highest <laughs> amount of folate built in. So again, don't go by brands as as long as they're um, they're certified, and you can tell that on the jar. It'll say that these vitamins have been certified to have the vitamins that are there. Okay, uh, Oksana, I was scared. Okay, so thank you, Danielle, for helping. There you go, it went away. Thank you, Janelle, thank you, good to know. Will metformin affect, yeah, okay, will metformin, metformin, anybody star, anybody on metformin must take methylated B vitamins, thank you. That's a key slide. If you are on metformin, it robs your body of, of vitamin Bs, it robs it. So if you're on metformin, please take an adjunctive uh, B complex, methylated B vitamin complex, additional to anything else you're taking if you're on metformin, okay? Anything on. Um, okay, well, it's another hour that I you've shared with me, which has been a, a, a fabulous, fabulous. I hope the uh, supplement talk was helpful. Um, it's it's challenging, I'll be honest with you. I spent a, probably 100 hours scouring the literature, and that's just a portion of the slideshow. Um, it's, uh, it's hard. But again, I'm going to just make it as basic as basic as possible. Let me see where my little thing is here. Um, let me go to my pointer option. Let me go here. And let me go all the way back for you guys. I'm going to go all the way back to my one slide. Two, there's only two slides I want you to remember, and here they are. I already did go. I'll show you them, and then we'll call it a day. Uh, here, coming slowly. There we go. Here we go. So let me go over here. Let me go to here. Oops. Wrong way. Go that way. Now where is my? I will go over here. Come over here and show you this. What should you eat? A Mediterranean 
uh, low fat, fast carbs, I'm sorry, low fast carbs, moderate protein, um, high unsaturated fatty acids, limit your calories, which means less than 1500 calories a day typically, move fast weekly. Second, in terms of um, 